Frances Farmer was an iconic actress who left an indelible mark on the silver screen during the 30s and 40s. In this video, we'll take a closer look at her story and the details surrounding her lobotomy. We'll also hear from Frances's sister who has come forward to shed some light on what really happened. Facts First presents Frances Farmer's sister confirms the detail of her lobotomy. Frances Farmer was a renowned movie star during the mid-20th century. Her acting career spanned from 1936 to 58, and she starred in 15 films alongside the likes of Cary Grant, Albert Decker, and Bing Crosby. But she was as well known for her turbulent personal life as she was for her on-screen roles. At the peak of her career, Frances was institutionalized due to her mental health struggles. There were rumors the star had been lobotomized during her time in the facility. Although her family later contested this claim, the story gave rise to a wave of books and films focused on the horrific surgery. Going forward, we'll be drawing much of what we know about Farmer's alleged lobotomy and mental health challenges from these sources. Despite her successful acting career, unfortunately, Farmer's mental health issues became the focal point of her legacy. Born September 19, 1913 in Seattle, Washington, Frances had an unstable childhood. Her parents divorced when she was four, and she moved to California with her mother before being sent back to Seattle to live with her father when her mother struggled to balance work and childcare. Farmer later recalled that her childhood was chaotic due to constant shuffling between households. She turned to writing as a way to cope with the confusion, and in her senior year of high school, she won a prestigious writing award for her essay titled God Dies. Her passion for writing led her to study journalism at the University of Washington before discovering her true calling in theater. She went on to star in various university plays and in 1935 made the pivotal decision to move to New York to kickstart her stage career. While that was her intention when making the move, instead she signed a seven-year contract with Paramount Pictures and began acting in B-movie comedies. Her breakthrough role came in 1936 when she starred in the western Rhythm on the Range with Bing Crosby, which catapulted her to stardom. Despite her newfound fame, Paramount studio head Adolf Zukor admonished her for not behaving like a rising star. Farmer wanted to be taken seriously as an actress, so she left Hollywood to work in Summerstock Theater in upstate New York. There, she caught the eye of playwright and director Clifford Odets, who offered her a role in his play Golden Boy. The part earned her widespread recognition and praise, and she continued working in the theater, only making a few films a year in Los Angeles. Unraveling at the Seams In 1942, Farmer's life began to unravel. She divorced her first husband, a fellow actor at Paramount, in June. Then, when she refused a role in Take a Letter, Darling, Paramount suspended her contract. On October 19th, she was arrested for drunk driving during a wartime blackout, and the judge fined her $500 and banned her from drinking. But Farmer had not paid the fine by 1943, and a judge issued a warrant for her arrest on January 6th. On January 14th, police found her at the Knickerbocker Hotel, where she was sleeping naked and intoxicated. She admitted to drinking everything she could get her hands on, including Benzedrine, a decongestant and stimulant that has psychoactive effects when abused. The judge overseeing her case sentenced her to 180 days in jail. To make matters worse, Newspapers reported she had assaulted a matron, injured a police officer, and suffered injuries herself. Workers allegedly had to remove her shoes as they escorted her to her cell to prevent her from kicking them. Her sister-in-law, who witnessed the sentencing, decided that admitting Farmer to a mental hospital would be more agreeable than imprisoning her, and she was subsequently transferred to Kimball Sanitarium in California, where she spent nine months. Following her institutionalization, Frances Farmer's mother traveled to Los Angeles and was awarded legal guardianship over her daughter by a judge. They returned to Seattle, but Farmer's situation didn't improve. On March 24, 1944, her mother checked her back into Western State Hospital after suffering another mental breakdown. Despite being released three months later, Farmer was readmitted to the hospital again in May of 1945. Although she was released in 46, she would spend almost five more years at Western State Hospital. Rumors of a lobotomy emerged, which were popularized by William Arnold's book Shadowland, published in 1978. Although Arnold later admitted he had fabricated the story and portions were untrue, the lobotomy rumor persisted as Farmer's most enduring legacy. 
Farmer's Sister Speaks Out. In her candid memoir, Look Back in Love, Farmer's sister, Edith Elliott, wrote that their father stopped the lobotomy from happening when he visited Western State Hospital in 1947. Nevertheless, Farmer suffered abuse while institutionalized, as she recounted in her posthumously published autobiography, Will There Really Be a Morning? Although Farmer did not finish writing her book before passing away, her friend Jean Ratcliffe completed it for her. However, it remains uncertain whether Ratcliffe embellished some parts of the book to satisfy the publisher's requirements. The world, especially the world of entertainment, is fixated on sensationalism, and juicy details are what sell books. Regardless of the veracity of Ratcliffe's account, it's worth noting that on March 25, 1950, Farmer was finally released from the hospital for good. Worried that her mother would institutionalize her yet again, Farmer moved to Eureka, California, where she became a bookkeeper. She later returned to television at the urging of her husband, Leland Meixel. Somewhat surprisingly, she even made a comeback of sorts in 1957 and appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. For the remainder of her life, she continued to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming a respected stage actress, working in the theater, and eventually even appearing in one last movie. While at Purdue University, she served as an actress-in-residence and took on several roles in productions there. She considered those performances some of the best of her career. Farmer's Passing and Legacy Frances Farmer passed away in August of 1970 at age 57 after being diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Despite her struggles with mental health, addiction, and institutionalization, her death was a great loss to the world of Hollywood and beyond. Although rumors about her being lobotomized persisted, as we've covered, it's been proven she was never subjected to such a procedure. Her legacy, however, extends far beyond this controversy. Frances Farmer was a trailblazer in her own right, a woman who dared to follow her dreams and stand up for herself, even in the face of societal pressures and mental health challenges. Her life and career were emblematic of the Hollywood system during her time, which often failed to support its stars and instead preyed on their vulnerabilities for profit. But despite this, Farmer persevered and left behind a legacy that continues to inspire and captivate audiences today. Her story further reminds us of the importance of mental health advocacy and the need for more compassionate and understanding attitudes towards those struggling with mental health issues. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Frances Farmer was rumored to have been lobotomized, but her own family denied that she ever had the procedure? And did you know that after being institutionalized, she actually made a comeback and spent the remainder of her life acting on the theater stage? Let us know in the comments section below.